to my classroom everyone. I'm Dr. Erin Willer, your griever teacher, and today I am here to share with you how to start a grief art journal. And in order to do that, I'm going to be starting my own journal that's going to allow me some space to start to process the death of my dad. Even though I've done a lot of work to process my miscarriages as well as the death of my son Milo, I've come to realize that I've never really given myself a lot of time and space for the grief surrounding losing my dad when I was 12 years old. So here I am 20 years later and I'm ready to start doing that work. This is a really great lesson, not only for those of you who are grievers, but also those of you who are teachers of grievers, those of you who are counselors and therapists who work with people who are processing their own losses. This is also a great lesson for those of you who teach research methods, those of you who teach qualitative methods and might be interested in including a unit on arts-based research. This is an excellent way to introduce your students to the process of what that can look like. If you are new to the classroom, please consider subscribing to the channel and let's get started. In today's lesson, I'm going to cover the four C's of starting an art journal. These include choosing an art journal, crafting your journal's purpose, creating backgrounds for your journal pages, and connecting the pieces. In terms of choosing your art journal, really any size mixed media journal will do. My favorite is this Dilutions Creative Journal that I'll link in the description below for you. I love that it's got larger pages. My favorite feature though is that it's got this envelope on the inside cover where you can store photos, stencil, any other artifacts that you might want to put in your journal as well. The most important C of this lesson is crafting your journal's purpose. You might think of this as setting the intention for your journal. For those of you who are research methods students, you might think of this as also thinking about what your research question is going to be. So in setting your intention or your purpose or your research question, you really want to think about what do you want to be able to know? What do you want to be able to do through the process of engaging with your grief art journal? Do you want to be able to care for your grief? Do you want to be able to spend time with the person that you have lost? Do you want to be able to connect with other people who are going through something similar to you? All of these are ways in which you can intentionally engage in your art journaling process in a way that is meaningful to you. For my journal, I really want this to be a place where I can work on forgiving my dad for being an alcoholic and dying. In my childhood and even well into my adulthood, I had convinced myself that if my dad really would have loved me, he would have simply stopped drinking and then he wouldn't have died and left me. But certainly here I am 30 years later and I know that alcoholism is a lot more complicated than that. And so I really want to begin to process and care for my grief as I start to think about what might else have been going on for him and his life and our relationship with one another? What may have been going on in his family and in his relationships with other people in the world? So for this journal, my purpose and my intention that I'm setting is that I want to be able to piece my relationship with my dad back together through the process of understanding what it means to forgive him. So in other words, how can I put together my memories, my experiences, and my understanding of his life in order to forgive him and start to build a relationship with him, even here we are 30 years after he has died. And in putting together this relationship and putting these pieces in place, I see that as putting together a beautiful mosaic. And of course then, that's the metaphor that I'm going to use in my artwork today. So now let me show you how I can translate this metaphor into the journal itself. So here you will see me writing out my journal's purpose or intention, which I am calling 
We are a beautiful mosaic that I will piece together one memory at a time. For those of you who are students or researchers, I'm also going to include my research question here, both writing it out and using letter stamps. And this question is, how can I forgive you? Now on to our third C, which is focused on creating backgrounds for your journal pages. A blank art journal can be intimidating, so start off with having some fun making the backgrounds. For this technique, I'm going to lay down a blank piece of paper on the one side of my journal, but you can certainly use the journal page itself if you'd like. I then am going to start off by spraying water on both pages. For this technique, I'm using the Dilutions ink sprays here. I'll link them in the description box below for you. These are one of my favorite art supplies of all time. I love how vibrant the colors are. I'm saturating the page with each of the colors and overlapping them just a bit. I love how these three come together and just make such a beautiful combination. I then am going to flip the loose page over on top of the journal page. I'll transfer the paint over with a paper towel roll. You can leave it like this and let it dry, but what I'm going to do here is pick up some of the paint with the paper towel roll, which also transfers over some of the beautiful pattern. I then continue this ghosting technique with a stencil. So what you'll see me do here is put the stencil down, spray a little bit of water on the loose leaf page, and then I'm going to transfer it over, flip the stencil over, take the paper towel roll, which the ink is dry, and then lift, and it makes this beautiful pattern. Take that paper towel roll, roll it back and forth, and then again, just keep going back and forth, experimenting with the process. These inks are so beautiful that they'll make a number of different amazing patterns for you. I love how it looks a little bit different every time. You might be wondering, well, what are you gonna do with that blank page over there? Why wouldn't you want that to be in the journal? And the answer is that I can save that for whatever I want for later to include in the journal itself. But again, just going back and forth, spraying the water, rolling with the paper towel until you are happy with the final result. I encourage you to play with this technique using different color combinations, stencils, and even paper towel patterns. For today's lesson, I'm gonna choose this page because I love how it looks like a mosaic, which of course is the theme of my project. Our final C of the lesson is focused on what I call connecting the pieces. This is where you will see me bring my journal's intention together visually. Here I have a page from one of my dad's EKG printouts from when he was in the hospital before he died. I'm using the Dilution Shimmer Sprays this time, which I'll link below in the description box. And I just love the color and the shine of these gorgeous sprays. Once this is dry, I'm going to start cutting out little rectangles and placing them in the squares from my stencil on the page. Again, this contributes to that mosaic look I'm going for. I love how these contrast with the background of the journal page. I decided that I love this so much that I wanted to create more tiles in different colors. So you will see me use the shimmer sprays in different colors and again, cut out rectangles and place them on the page. Now I chose my dad's EKG graph because I love how it looks like tiles of a mosaic which fit well with my theme. You don't need to have an EKG graph for your own project. You could use any sort of artifact that is meaningful to you, such as a letter, a receipt, a ticket stub, or even a page from a book. Next, I chose a picture of my dad and me that is meaningful. I think I'm about eight years old in this picture. He's hard to see, but that's my dog's shadow with us. My dad was dressed up for a special event. And I remember being annoyed that he wanted to take this picture. You can see it in my body language as he held me tight and I am looking away. 
I like this picture for this project because it represents for me how I want to work on coming toward my dad, connecting with him rather than just trying to escape him in my grief, which again fits with the intention I set for my journal, which includes piecing my relationship with my dad back together like a mosaic and working on forgiving him. At the end here, you will see me pasting everything down with a basic glue stick and smoothing with the paper towel so as not to smear the ink. And there you have the finished project. In our next lessons, I will share additional projects for further addressing your journal's purpose, intention, and research question. I hope this lesson helped you see how you can get started with your own grief art journal. I hope it also helps you see how you can put the pieces of your own grief experiences together in a way that is meaningful to you. Comment below if you have questions about this project, if you have interest in me sharing more activities related to the journal. If you haven't yet, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram at grieverteacherphd. And that's it for me today. I will see you back in the classroom next time. Grievers and Griever teachers. Mm -hmm.